Welcome. Welcome to an artist talk by Professor Jimmy Allen, funded by the Catherine Hyde Trust Foundation. Professor Allen teaches undergraduate photography courses at Missouri State University. He received his MFA from the University of Texas at San Antonio and his bachelor's in visual arts from the University of Sydney. His research centers around social documentary photography, including the landscapes of small Midwestern towns and the people that live there. So welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming out tonight. And um, I especially wanna thank uh, the folks at Missouri Southern State University, uh, Christine Bentley and uh, Donna Pooley um, invited me out to uh, have a show, give a talk. So I really appreciate that. And then all the staff at the Spiva Gallery as well uh, did a wonderful job hanging the work. So I really appreciate that. Uh, also wanna thank the art and design department at Missouri State University and the uh, Reynolds College of Arts and Letters at MSU for their support of this project. Um, and especially wanna thank my family for their support, my wife, Jamie, and my son, Jack, uh, who have gone out with me on lots of these photo trips around the state. So uh, really appreciate that. Uh, I thought I'd start off by talking about uh, my interest in this project. Uh, I was born and raised in Springfield, um, lived there for most of my life, but I did get a chance to uh, live abroad for a while. As uh, Christine mentioned, I uh, lived in Sydney, Australia for a couple of years. I uh, got my uh, undergraduate degree there. And then when I returned to the States, I lived in uh, San Antonio, Texas uh, for a number of years and got my master's degree there. Um, my own interest in small towns, I guess you would say, started uh, because my parents were both from small towns. Uh, my dad was from Seymour, Missouri, and my mom was from Ava, Missouri. Uh, and so over the summers, especially, I would go down to Ava a lot and spend time with my grandmother there. Um, my grandma never learned how to drive a car, which as a child, that was really strange to me because especially around here, it seems like everybody drives a car, but my grandma didn't know how to drive a car. So when I would go down there and spend time with her, uh, we walked everywhere. And I think it was on those walks that, you know, you kind of slow down, you're kind of bored a little bit and you start looking around, you start paying attention to little details. And I think that kind of experience is what really helped shape me as a photographer years later, uh, taking that time to appreciate little details, little things that you see uh, as you're walking around. Uh, so we would walk everywhere and um, about the only time that we would take a car would be if we walked to the grocery store, got groceries, and then uh, you know we had so many groceries that we couldn't carry them all back. So we would get a little taxi and uh, back to her house. Um, and as I'm walking around Ava, I'm noticing that it doesn't really look that great. Um, buildings are kind of run down. I can see on the sides of the buildings, old advertisements that are kind of faded and uh, weathering and, and uh, just going away. And it seemed like the whole town was kind of experiencing this. And then when I would be back home, I'm kind of comparing that to things that I'm seeing on TV. And especially um, when I was younger, I would stay home over the summers by myself. And I got into this routine of watching uh, the Andy Griffin show. Have any of you ever seen that show? Yeah. <laughs> so the little town, the fictional town of Mayberry is, you know, the setting for that show. And so, you know, I see sort of this setting and I'm trying to like compare that to my own experiences of being in Ava and they, they, they're just not matching up. So um, that was kind of an interesting point to me. I didn't really understand what that meant at the time. Um, but now I kind of see it that I think people have kind of an idealized view of quaint little towns uh, where there's lots of like mom and pop shops, things like that and you know, cute little places to live, so on and so forth. But as you start to travel around, you don't see that all that much. In fact, there's a lot of um, 
a lot of these towns, I guess you would say, are kind of on the decline. And we'll kind of get into some little facts about Missouri here in just a moment. And the data tells us that that's true. Now, another thing that uh, I, I kind of recently discovered as I was out and making these trips all around Missouri was that there's a little town up uh, about two hours east of Kansas City called Marceline. Anybody ever heard of this place, Marceline, Missouri? Well, this was a boyhood home of Walt Disney for about four years. His family moved there um, and they spent about four years on a little farm just outside of Marceline, Missouri. And Walt Disney was so impressed by uh, this little town and he was a little boy at the time. He was like five years old when they moved there, but it made such an impression on him that when he was an older man and they were uh, designing Disneyland, Main Street USA, the main road that you walk in on in Disneyland, and in fact, most of the, the Disney parks around the world is based off of the Main Street in Marceline, Missouri. Um, so he and his family ended up moving away, uh, I think 1910, roughly around that time. Don't quote me on that. But somewhere around that time, they moved to Kansas City, and that's where he became uh, you know, a pretty famous artist. Um, and in the 50s, Marceline was um, opening up a public swimming pool, and they decided that they wanted to name it after Disney, and they invited him to come back. And so he was really honored to do that returned back to his childhood home. And um, so they, they did the naming of the pool and everything. And he had this idea that he was actually going to open up a uh, park, a Disneyland kind of inspired park in Marceline. Now, this never came to fruition because just a few years later, even though they had purchased 200 acres around Marceline and they had options to purchase another 500, well, Disney passed away. Um, so they were working on the Orlando project, which would become Disney World. Um, so anyway, those uh, ideas never came to fruition, but there was this idea of kind of, you know, uh, building up a big park there outside in, or excuse me, around Marceline. Uh, and I mention all of this just because, again, it, it gives an example of where a small town kind of makes this impression on you. And it inspired him so much that all of the Disneyland parks utilize this kind of um, uh, charm, if you will, small, small town charm of Marceline, Missouri. But uh, Ava, I wanna go back to Ava. Ava was nothing like these places. Ava was really kind of on the decline um, and lots of businesses were going out uh, lots of jobs and economic opportunity were being lost. They had a Rawlings plant there, an Emerson plant, and they closed down, went out of business. They had places for the teenagers to hang out, places called like Sugar Shack, Hillbilly Hangout, His and Hers, and they were all closing. Um, so I would talk to my parents and the stories that they would tell, you know, I would ask, well, why did you decide to leave Seymour and Ava? And their simple answer, both of them agreed, there was just no opportunity for us. There wasn't much to do. Um, and especially in Ava, they outlawed cruising around the square. And that's what all the teenagers really like to do. So when that went away, the teenagers were like, you know, there's nothing to do here. And it felt like the town was sort of dying in a way. Now, if you go to Ava, um, the downtown area doesn't look that great, but there is some growth starting to happen on the outskirts of town. Anybody ever been to Ava? No. Okay. Uh, so anyway, it, it's good to see that there's some growth there and traveling around Missouri. Um, it's kind of this big mix. You'll find some little towns are revitalizing uh, their downtown areas or historic areas and others. It's like abandoned ship. You know, we're out of here because, you know, economic opportunities have kind of dried up. So um, before I get into some of my pictures, wanted to, let's see, wanted to share with you some facts about Missouri. So um, they're still trying to come out with all of the 2020 census data. And when I started working on my project, um, I was trying to get in and do the research and I had 2010 census data to go off originally, but I've, I've tried to give you some updated information here about Missouri. 
And according to the 2020 census data of Missouri's 114 counties, 78 of those saw their population decline. And it begs the question, what's causing the population loss? And again, I think it's mainly due to the fact that young people are leaving for better opportunities. Uh, they might go away, go to college, um, get that degree, and then there's really nothing for them back in their little towns to use that degree for, so they just don't return. So I think that's a big reason why um, we're losing that population. And when rural communities are not growing like suburban and urban communities, that gets translated into loss of services that the rural communities can provide, as well as a loss in political power. And we see that playing out in uh, gerrymandering uh, throughout the state. Uh, a few years ago, uh, citizens in this state overwhelmingly passed um, a measure which would make gerrymandering nonpartisan, um, create a commission uh, that was neither Republican nor Democrat to draw the uh, district lines based on census data. And that determines who your representatives are. Um, but that got overturned uh, last year, I think. Um, so that's gonna go back to a partisan uh, committee that's gonna redraw those districts. So again, it's a lot to do with political power. Um, so when we look at Missouri compared to other states across the country, we're the 19th most populous. And where do I need to point this to get this to go to the next slide? I'm having some problems here. Okay, all right, I skipped one. So we are bordered by eight states. Um, they believe that the state's been inhabited for somewhere around 12,000 years. Uh, we became an official state in 1821, so we're celebrating our bicentennial this year. Um, and that was part of the Missouri Compromise. You may remember that from your history courses. Uh, so it allowed Maine to come in as a free state and Missouri came in as a slave owning state. Uh, all of these started in Missouri, Pony Express, Oregon Trail, Santa Fe Trail, California Trail. Some well-known Missourians, some of these I didn't know were from Missouri, uh, but Mark Twain uh, from Hannibal, Missouri, Chuck Berry, um, all the way through uh, Bar Brad Pitt, he's from my hometown, Springfield, Harry S. Truman. We are sometimes referred to as the mother of the West, the cave state, and also the show me state. And uh, some demographic uh, information here. So roughly about 80% um, of the population in the state identify as being white alone, not Hispanic or Latino. Uh, nearly 12% black and African American. And then you can see the other percentages are really quite low. 77% affiliate with Christianity, 20% unaffiliated or no religion, and then 3% non-Christian. So as I started kind of doing research on my project, I was interested in these demographics and I, I was interested in uh, what makes up the population of our state. What was I gonna encounter as I, I traveled across the state to photograph? Uh, Missouri is not a very wealthy state, I'll put it mildly. Um, the median household income around uh, $55,000 a year and nearly 800,000 of our residents live below the poverty line. We are ranked 22nd among states for gross state product. This is where things get a little better. We're sixth in the production of hogs, seventh for cattle, Top five for soybeans, fourth for rice, 108,000 farms. That's an interesting number to me. We're second only to Texas and Texas is a huge state. Um, so second in the number of farms. So that tells you how much land in the state is being used for agriculture. So it also tells you why possibly some of these rural populations are on the decline as well. So according to US, News and World Report, we're ranked 30th in education, 42nd in healthcare, 27th in infrastructure, 
45th in crime and corrections, and we're above the national average for all of those uh, metrics. 49th in state aid provided to K through 12 public schools. That's terrible. 89.9% have a high school graduation uh, rate, 292 have a bachelor's degree. And then Shannon County in 2020 was named the poorest county in the state. And Shannon County is sort of uh, toward the southeastern part of the state. Um, and you can see that the median household income there is roughly $23,000 lower than the rest of the state. So things are pretty rough there. And when I heard this news, um, I came across um, a little documentary that um, Missouri State University has digitized and they put up on YouTube, you can find this now, and it's called A Portrait of the Ozarks and it was made in 1978. And it was really interesting to me because uh, it took a look at the people that lived in Shannon County. Um, so I saw this figure come out uh, saying that it's the poorest county. And then all of a sudden I find this documentary and it was really interesting because they were kind of at that time, 1978, talking about how jobs were drying up, how uh, a lot of the residents there depended on for their livelihood, logging and mining, but that those jobs were starting to go away and tourism was increasing because of the river there. Uh, a lot of people would go on float trips. So it was like this change was starting to happen. And then fast forward, you know, roughly 40 years, and now it's the poorest county in the state. So as I mentioned, Missouri has 114 counties. Um, St. Louis County uh, with the largest population and then Worth County uh, with the smallest. Does this have a pointer at all? Not sure, okay. Well, Worth County, very top, almost to the Western portion there. That's Worth County, right, right on the border with Iowa. So some more demographic information, uh, white population in the state. So the darker blue means that uh, you are getting a higher and higher percentage of white population. But the thing to note here is that even this kind of light colored uh, blue represents 81 to 97 percent population that identifies as white. So that figure correlates with what I would see when I was going around the state myself. Uh, and if you look up some of these little towns and the counties uh, where they're from, it's not uncommon to see that the white population there is hovering around 95 to 97 percent. Median household income. Again, the darker the blue area, the higher the median household income. So when you start seeing those uh, kind of white counties, uh, that means that uh, their median household income is really quite low. And so obviously if we switch and we talk about uh, the poverty rate, then those white counties flip uh, to the darker blue. So my project is called Point and Periphery. And I began this project, I guess you would say back in 2012. Um, we at Missouri State University had a couple of visiting artists uh, by the name of David Wharton and Todd Bertolet. Uh, they had come up and David Wharton especially um, was going around and photographing little towns in the Southern states. He teaches uh, in Mississippi, Oxford, uh, in Oxford, Mississippi there. And uh, so they came into town, they had an exhibition and they wanted to go out and photograph. So we all hopped into a van and would drive to like Bolivar. And then we made our way out to some of the uh, towns here in Southwest Missouri. And it was so much fun to go out and do that. But I wasn't really seriously considering that a project at that time, uh, cause that was kind of their thing. Uh, then my colleague, Bruce West, um, he had gotten a research grant and his research was to photograph some small towns in Missouri. So as he was working on this, he would invite me to go with him to, as he traveled around to these little towns and he was photographing in color. And I'm like, well, if Bruce is photographing in color, I'm going to photograph in black and white. I want mine to be different than his. 
Um, but I really didn't know what I was photographing. It was his project. But then as we kind of did that more and more, I got into it. I started thinking about those times with my grandma and Ava, what it was like uh, walking around that little town. And I started to get more and more interested in it. So around 2014, uh, I'm still photographing here and there around uh, Southwest Missouri little towns. And then a major world event happened in our backyard. Uh, Michael Brown Jr., uh, a black man was shot and killed in Ferguson, Missouri. Do y'all remember this? And that brought worldwide attention to our state, the riots that happened in Ferguson um, and just everything that went along with that. And that really was kind of the beginning of my kind of introduction to Black Lives Matter. Um, I started to really think about those demographics in the state and what that meant. Uh, that a majority of our state has a white population. Uh, so I, I became more interested in that. So I started thinking more seriously about working on a small town project and broadening the scope. And what I, what I started to realize was that while I was born and raised in Missouri, there was so much of the state that I'd never actually seen. Um, so you traveled to kind of the major centers like Kansas City, St. Louis, Branson, Joplin, things like that. Um, but I hadn't been around to see a lot of the state and I wanted to change that. So I started writing up a proposal to take a sabbatical from uh, MSU. And this is right around 2016. And I'm putting the final touches on that sabbatical proposal and Donald Trump ends up winning the presidency. And I thought that that was really interesting how our nation went from voting in the first black president to voting in Donald Trump. And it just seemed like it was a real change in our country. And of course, one of the first things that happens is uh, what happened in um, uh, Charlotte uh, with the uh, protesters there and the tragedy that occurred when a young woman was struck by uh, a vehicle there and killed. Um, so there was really some racial tension uh, surfacing, boiling over in the country. And, and that was interesting to me. So I put the final touches on the uh, sabbatical proposal. And I was really interested in exploring the idea of race, religion, education, those things uh, going around the state and, and photographing that. So in 2018, I took my sabbatical from MSU. Uh, I got a semester uh, where I didn't have to have my teaching responsibilities and I could go out and, and start working uh, on this project. So in total, um, I gave myself the goal to photograph at least one small town in every county. So remember there's 114 of those. I ended up photographing 217 little towns. And as I was preparing for this talk, I decided to map those out. And, and that was kind of interesting to me to be able to see all the places that I had actually gone. So it was nice to see that. So the way that I photograph, um, the first thing that I had to do was research. Um, so I found the census data and I decided that I wanted to try to stop by towns that had a population at the lowest, somewhere around a thousand. Uh, and that's just because I found that if the population was lower than that, a lot of times there wasn't very much to those little towns. You kind of drive through it and, and that's it. Um, so I, I tried to stay at around a thousand or higher. I wanted to avoid the major metropolitan areas of Kansas City, St. Louis, Springfield, Columbia. Um, so I, I tried to avoid those. Um, so I created a big spreadsheet so that I could keep track of everything. I bought an atlas and I cross-referenced it so that I would have the name of the town, the population, the county that it was in, and the page number of the atlas so that I could easily find that. And then I would use Google Maps to basically map out road trips. And I would take these two, three day uh, road trips to these little towns. And when you put it in a little town uh, or any town into Google Maps, it's gonna take you right to the center, right to the heart of the town. Um, so the reason why I call it point and periphery is uh, I would end up going to the center of town, which often has the courthouse, the town square, 
and you kind of drive around a little bit and you get out, you photograph. And then as you're leaving town, a lot of times you'll see some, something that catches your eye and you want to make a photograph of that as well. So not all photos that you're going to see were taken in the town somewhere nearby. So uh, one thing that I also want to mention, uh, when I photographed with David Wharton and my colleague Bruce West, that was the first time that I had ever photographed with other people. Uh, are any of you photographers? Yeah? Okay. Photography is normally kind of a solitary experience. You go out, you do your thing. Um, and I think that that's in large part because photographers are kind of competitive. You know, if, if I'm going out with another photographer, there's a chance that they're going to get a better photo than I got, right? So you, you try to avoid that. But with these guys, it was great because we would just kind of go to the town, spread out, go different directions, do our own thing. Well, in 2018, I met a beautiful woman. She's sitting here in the audience. Uh, her name is Jamie. And what was really fun was as I got to know Jamie, uh, we traveled around the state working on my project together. So we would be in the car doing these long trips. And let me tell you, it's a really great way to get to know somebody. So I was really honored to be able to, I'm getting a little emotional. I was really honored uh, to be able to go on those journeys with her. It was great. So I want to, I want to thank Jamie again. Uh, she was my, my partner in all of this. So um, we're going to get into the pictures. I'll, I'll, I know you guys want to see some pictures here. Uh, I wanted to share with you photos. Um, you know, when you put together a show, you really have to narrow it down uh, and try to create an edit that gets at something, kind of tells a story. And I wanted to share with you all more photos than what you're going to see in the show, more photos than what you would see if you went to my website. So I'll give you a little something special tonight. So as we look through these, you're going to see uh, subjects where my focus is on the architecture of these uh, little towns, courthouses, various memorials that I would find. Uh, I'm really interested in signs and murals and what they can kind of do in terms of clues to inform us about uh, the people that live there. Uh, window displays, people's homes, various things on the outskirts of town and portraits. So this is a man that I came across in Branson, Missouri. And I have to admit to you, I've visited so many towns, I'm probably not gonna be able to remember all of these uh, towns' names. But we'll just kind of go through these a little bit. These are some uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. And one of the things that I really like about working on a project like this is that I don't know what I'm going to encounter on any given day when I go there. Um, as I mentioned, most of these places I've never been to in my life. Um, and the serendipity of it is something that is really interesting to me. So I photograph using a digital camera. It's a 35 millimeter format uh, camera. So it's kind of a longer rectangle. Uh, as I mentioned, I photograph in black and white. I like the drama of black and white. As soon as you photograph in black and white, um, it no longer is the real world because we're so used to seeing everything in color. Uh, I like that. I like the drama of it. I like when I bring the camera up to my eye, it's sort of a challenge. It's, a, it's an opportunity to challenge myself in the organization of objects within that little rectangle. It's one of the photographer's biggest responsibilities is deciding what gets put into the rectangle and what gets left out. And, and I like that challenge, I, I find it exciting. This is in uh, Lamar, which is the uh, uh, home of Harry S. Truman. I believe this is Carthage, not too far from here.
you can see this building in the background in Appleton City. Um, you can see where a storm has rolled through and just ripped that building apart. And of course, uh, you folks in Joplin know all about the, uh, the tragedy of, of what, uh, what storms can do. I really like meeting people while I'm out there. I didn't used to always be like that. Um, a lot of times when I was very early in this project, people would come up and they would ask me, uh, you know, hey, what are you taking pictures of? Why are you doing that? And um, it made me feel a little uneasy. Uh, I, would, I would have people inquire if I was with the newspaper. It, I had somebody ask once if I was with the IRS. Um, and I'm like, no, no, it's okay. You know, I, I'm just taking pictures. Um, but a lot of times you just get funny looks. They don't know really why you're doing it. Is there any way that we can dim these lights a little bit? And that would, yeah, thank you. So that previous photo and uh, this one are from Ava. And this is one that, uh, you know, I originally kind of overlooked and went back to it and, and thought, this is really a nice little moment. I, I, as a photographer, I was kind of critical because my shutter speed was kind of low. So as this young mother's uh, kind of dancing in the street with her child, she's a little blurry and I, you know, well, it's not perfect. That bothered me a little bit. Um, and it's one of the things with digital photography that um, a lot of photographers will take a picture. If they don't like it, they delete it. They get rid of it forever. When I first started out in photography, I shot film and you always had your negatives. And what I realized was that sometimes I would go back and look at those negatives a few years later and I would find images there that I didn't realize the potential in them uh, when I first took them. It took a little bit of time for me to register that there was some good pictures. So uh, when I teach my classes, I, I tell my students that story because um, I wanna emphasize to them the idea of not getting rid of photos that you don't think are good. Um, you know, unless it's like extremely technically flawed, uh, keep those photos because you might like them later. Little city hall here. I think this is in uh, Scott City. Uh, just down I-44 from Joplin. And uh, when I was putting this together, I had another uh, image of this man and he's standing much more stoic. He, he's standing there. Uh, he's got his hand on kind of this uh, property marker in his yard. But I like this photo better. And the reason is very personal to me. And it's because the man's face reminds me of my own uncle, uh, my uncle Charlie. Um, my uncle Charlie committed suicide and his face reminded me so much of Charlie. And it just struck me that when he made that expression, how much he looked like him and, and I had to keep that. And I mentioned that only because I really feel like going around and taking pictures, all pictures in a way are a self portrait. Um, these are the things and experiences that are important to me. Hopefully there's a universal quality in them that resonates with the viewer as well. Um, a little difficult to read there, but on, on this little sign, it says uh, builder of bird houses. I like that. Somebody's mailbox. And you see these homes that are just becoming overgrown as people have left, people doing their best, given the money that they've got to uh, keep their homes uh, in a livable condition. As I was walking by, you know, as a middle-aged white man, um, you're not always comfortable taking pictures of children. Um, but I was pleased when I was walking by that this young man 
uh, asked me to take his picture. He had just gotten this little chicken for Easter and he wanted to have a picture made with it. And uh, he was helping his mom paint the house. He's got paint on his clothes there. And uh, so, you know, I'm like, ooh. So I asked mom, would it be okay if I take this picture? And she's like, yeah, yeah, of course, that'd be fine. And so I explained to her what I'm working on, who I am. And uh, I always try to put people at ease, let them know that my intentions are good uh, as I'm working on uh, making these photos. Another overgrown house there. And sometimes you're just walking and, and you don't know why, but all of a sudden you're just kind of struck by a scene. And you think for a, a moment, maybe there's something here. And you bring the camera up to your eye, you try to frame it up. Sometimes it doesn't work and you go, nah, it, it, it's just not gonna be that good of a photo. Sometimes you make it with the hope that you'll like it later. Other times you take a picture and you're like, I think that's gonna be a good picture. And then you hope for the best. But there's plenty of those when you get back. You thought you made a really good picture. You look at it later. You have a little time. And uh, in between taking it and looking at it, and you go, nah, that wasn't that good of a picture. These three young men uh, came out of a little convenience store in St. Joseph, Missouri with their skateboards. And again, this to me was a little self-portrait. It reminded me of hanging out with my cousins. I, I'm an only child. And uh, so my cousins were kind of like my brothers and sisters growing up and, and they lived in little towns like Republic and Nevada and El Dorado Springs and, and I loved hanging out with them. And um, I noticed that this young man um, had a deformity with his hand and uh, he's trying to kind of press that up against the, uh, you know, and hold the, the bag of chips there uh, with his hand. And so to me, this is another little self-portrait. Um, it's not me, but it is me. And in St. Joseph, there's like a little military museum there. And they had this helicopter parked outside, which I thought was really pretty interesting. And again, thinking about Mayberry, thinking about Marceline, um, as you walk around some of these little towns, it's like you get the feeling that it's not a very nice place to be. Um, so this is one of those examples. I'm walking around, I see this, and this is the first picture that I make. And I was just kind of interested in all of that um, kind of peeling paint and everything on the sides. And then I started looking at that door and I realized that it has a very homophobic message. And so I make a picture of it. And it startles me in a way. It, it's disturbing in a way. I don't like it, but I wanted to make a picture of it. As I mentioned, walking around Ava, I would see these painted signs on the sides of buildings that were faded. And so whenever I encounter those, I like to make a picture of them. It says, happy holiday from almost like a diamond shape to you. I thought that was kind of interesting as this man's walking by. And again, I don't know that this says a whole lot about a small town, but I like the composition of it. I thought it, it could possibly be an interesting photo. Now this is a fun one. So I'm walking down the street in the neighborhood, taking my pictures. And I spot these two feet out of a trunk and these people just standing around. And I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and I, I suspect that this guy's like in the trunk working, maybe installing some stereo speakers, something like that. But I think to myself, that could be a funny picture, seeing these feet. So I'm thinking to myself, take the picture with the people surrounding it. And then the thing that the viewer will all of a sudden notice are these feet sticking out. So I asked permission to make a picture and it's kind of a nonverbal thing. I, I kind of raised the camera. I'm like, you know, is this okay? And the guy that's holding the stick there, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on one second. 
and he goes and grabs this stick and he starts just jabbing this guy in the trunk. And this guy doesn't even know that I'm standing out there making a picture, you know. Um, so it was just a, a, a funny moment. They're, they're kind of hamming it up, playing it up for the camera. And uh, I like the result. I think it's a fun picture. So again, I mentioned St. Joe, home of uh, the Pony Express and the Oregon Trail. So they've got this uh, statue there commemorating that. And, uh, you know, that's another big controversy that happened um, early on in the Trump presidency was uh, removal of those Confederate statues. Um, and so it got me thinking about the statues that I was seeing in these little towns. And so, you know, obviously this isn't a Confederate statue, but uh, I just thought that it was kind of a fun picture. They're painting the fence there and they've covered that uh, little lion statue to protect it from the paint. I like going down little back alleys in the small towns. So this is in uh, around Jefferson City. And um, I just kind of walked down this back alley and somebody had spray painted the revolution starts with you. And I was like, I like that message. That's a good one. And uh, in fact, if you visit my website, that's the, the very first photo that you'll see. I thought this was interesting, the, uh, the remodeling job here, the, the painting of this house. I told you, I like signs. I, I, I like the graphic kind of quality of it. You know, there's gonna be some day, uh, 20 years down the road, and we're gonna be paying, you know, hundreds of dollars to file our taxes and we'll go, oh man, back then you could do it for $37. The sign says, uh, try Jesus. If you don't like him, the devil will take you back. And this is one that's in the show. Um, this is a little produce stand outside of Nevada, Missouri. And, um, you know, I walked up thinking, okay, you know, I might try and make a picture here. And then I noticed the young woman sitting there in her hat. And I don't know if you can read that very well, but it says Rebel Hottie. And I thought that that was an interesting hat. house that's been demolished. And again, as I was kind of going through my pictures, I noticed that so many of them were taken on these kind of stormy days. And that wasn't anything intentional, but, um, you know, you, you make plans to go on the trip and you just kind of take the weather as, it, as you get it um, and, and hope for the best. And I've had to spend uh, hours in my car waiting out a rainstorm so that I can get out and, and walk around the town. This is in Nevada, uh, or no, I, I'm sorry, El Dorado Springs in uh, kind of an interesting uh, little juxtaposition there with the rebel flag and the American flag and then a goat. Uh, this one's in Sedalia. And, you know, I, I was standing there uh, framing this up. I, I saw the potential for the, the markings of the parking space there, the, the flag, the bright white building. And I'm thinking, okay, this could be an interesting composition. And then I can hear this guy coming before I see him and he turns the corner. Or I, actually, I'm sorry, as he approaches the corner, I'm thinking, please turn to you know my right and and come into the picture frame and sure enough he does and and again that's one of those serendipitous moments i think it would have been a, a good picture but i think the presence of the the man there with his cart uh, makes it a much better picture rats get get fat as the cold grows some interesting missouri philosophy there so I told you, I, I like looking into all these little shop windows, seeing the little displays that they have. This is in Marshall, Missouri. So there are some beautiful courthouses all across the state. 
and uh, sometimes you roll into a little town and you're just kind of in awe of how wonderful the courthouse looks. This is a place called Slater. Uh, this couple was sitting there watching the uh, eclipse in 2017. So I went up to St. Clair, Missouri, because I'd seen that there would the total eclipse would pass over St. Clair. Uh, so I found these uh, this couple sitting out in the field uh, observing the eclipse happen. And made that picture. And this is another one of those signs. It says, this is not the pissing hole for the unfriendly tavern. So put your pecker back in your pants or say cheese for the camera. Again, not a very welcoming place. Sometimes when you're making pictures of windows, you try to figure out where to stand because you you don't want your reflection showing up. And I thought that it was interesting as I passed by this, I liked the broken window, I liked the broken words. Uh, and then as I'm standing there in front of it, I realized I cannot even see my own reflection in the window. I thought that was kind of interesting. This guy, his name is Max. And uh, I took this in Bethany, Missouri. And um, he and his wife were really struggling. Uh, they were trying to unload a very large laser copier machine out of their car and into this library slash historical society there. And I could see that they were struggling with it. So as I'm walking by, I ask him if I could be of help. And uh, he takes me up on the offer. I help him uh, move that copier inside. And um, one of the great things about meeting people in these little towns is that you run into so many folks who know so much about the town and Max is one of those people. And so he stood there and talked for, to me for probably a, a good hour, just telling me all kinds of stories about the town and other little towns around. And so as he was standing there talking, uh, I, I asked him if I could take some pictures and, and he said, sure. And, and so uh, I, I just, I like that picture. He has massive hands. And uh, just one of those guys that has just worked hard all his life, you can tell. This is another one from that little town in Bethany. And, and this is one where I got caught, you know. So I'd seen this mural on the building and I thought there's a potential for a good picture there. And then I spot the little kid sitting there playing by himself. And I take a picture and I get a little closer, take another, I get a little closer, take another. And then all of a sudden mom pops out and she, you know, catches me in the act. And, and she's got this look of like, you know, protection and concern on her face. And I like that. Um, and so I, I made sure to, you know, introduce myself and, and tell her who I was, what I was working on, try to put her at ease and, and let her know I'm not some uh, weird, creepy dude uh, out there. So. And, you know, again, walking up on this, I see the mist and the bright sunlight. I'm thinking, oh, this could be an interesting picture. I start to frame it up. And then this kid pops out from the car wash. And, you know, he's kind of peeking around the corner because uh, he probably sees me taking the picture. And he's like, what's this guy taking a picture of? So he's looking around there to see what's happening. And I like that little moment. Uh, this is Sandra. Um, and... It was really interesting because as I was walking around, I encountered her husband and her children and um, they were outside, the kids were playing and I thought, you know, this could be another picture, maybe kids playing, I'm gonna ask the dad if that's okay. And I introduced myself and he's like, oh yeah, sure, you know, no problem. So I'm making these pictures and then Sandra comes and she had just gotten off work at the local um, eatery and, um, so we, we're chatting there, and as you can tell, it's a uh, bright sunlit day, and um, I'm talking to her, and, and I, I recognize, uh, and I'm like, are you, are you Amish? Or, and she's like, no, I'm Mennonite, and, it, and it's predominantly an Amish town. So I asked her, you know, if it would be okay to take a picture, because I'm kind of naive. I don't know if, 
you know, I, I think the Amish don't like to have their picture taken, but maybe Mennonites are okay. She tells me that it's okay. And as she's standing there in the bright sunlight, trying to look at the camera, she's like, oh, the sun's so bright. And I say, it's okay. Just close your eyes. And that's how I was able to get that moment. These three kids are playing with a little remote control car. And this is one that, you know, again, I wasn't quite sure about taking it, but, you know, like my intentions are good. I feel like if, uh, if an adult comes around and is questioning me, I can speak to the project and what I'm working on and uh, hopefully put them at ease. So. I'm doing on time here. I, I got to get through these. This was at a, uh, a big coming home reception for soldiers. They had just returned from Afghanistan and the families were uh, outside waiting for them to grab uh, their bags off the, uh, the buses and uh, ran into this um, veteran and he's showing me his tattoo. Love the graphics on this little tire shop in Lebanon. And then this is another one. This is Private Walters. Um, his family and he were just finishing up a, a lunch and they were standing out there uh, taking pictures of him as I'm walking down the sidewalk. And again, it's one of those things where I just kind of gesture like, is it OK? And I, I get the OK from, uh, I think, his wife there. And he turns toward me and, and I make that picture. Another one from the show. So I see this, uh, you know, uh, service center and from the outside, it's kind of interesting. And I start taking pictures and this guy's like, Hey, what are you doing? Why are you taking pictures? And so I introduce myself and he invites me inside. And so I ask permission uh, to take some pictures and, and uh, he agrees. And, and I just love the little wanted uh, sign there for the, the dog and, I thought it was kind of a, an interesting place. This is an odd one to me, and, and I'm hoping that I, sometime somebody's going to be able to explain this to me. So as I'm leaving this little town, driving to the next, I spot these dead catfish hanging on the fence post. And I mean, the, the, as you go down the road, it's just every fence post has a catfish on it. Does anybody know the significance of that? No. I've heard maybe it's just sort of like bragging rights, you know, to, to show off all the catfish that you caught. I'm not certain, but I tried to make some pictures of it. And I'd never seen that before, so I thought it was pretty interesting. This is from uh, Marshfield, Missouri. Marshfield is the home of Edwin Hubble, uh, Hubble Space Telescope. So if uh, you go there, uh, the courthouse is uh, sitting there. They have a, a, a model of the Hubble Space Telescope sitting outside there. And I just thought it was an interesting juxtaposition, that and the, the cannon in the foreground. And as I'm making pictures there in Marshfield, uh, this young boy is uh, coming by on his bicycle. And I just knew that he was going to jump his bike. Somehow I knew it. And so I brought my camera up to my eye and I just waited and, and I just knew it was going to happen and snapped it. And I guess he realized that I took his picture and he didn't like it. So he went and got his buddies. And as I'm walking down the street, they are literally like circling me like sharks, trying to intimidate me. And I'm just like, you kids get out of here. Leave me alone. Those monkeys, I thought that was pretty interesting. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Another little war memorial or memorial to veterans in this little town. And you see that everywhere you go. All these little towns by their courthouse will have these little memorials to their veterans. This is one I'm walking down the road and I see this girl jumping on the trampoline and I think, well, maybe there's a, a interesting picture there. And, and so uh, I, I see one of these women and I'm thinking, well, it might be the mom. So I ask if it's okay to take the picture. And the first couple of pictures I take are just of this girl on the trampoline. 
And then I'm talking to the, these women and I'm seeing the girl jumping in the trampoline behind them as I'm talking. And I'm like, that's the picture as these, uh, all these different generations here. And I thought that was interesting. And when I rolled into the town to make this photo, um, as I got out of my car to start photographing for the day, I passed by this barber shop, and I kind of peeked inside and I thought, well, that could be interesting, but I just didn't have my courage in that particular moment to go in and make the picture. So I walked around, made other photos, and then I'm walking back to my car, and I said, I'm going to kick myself if I don't go in there and check it out. And so I went in and introduced myself and asked if it'd be okay to take pictures. And uh, he agreed to let me do that. And, and I got a, a photo that I just absolutely love. This picture is taken in Knoll, Missouri. Um, Y'all know where Knoll's at? Knoll's kind of an interesting place, um, particularly in Southwest Missouri. You don't see very large populations of um, African-Americans. You just don't. Uh, now you get to the southeastern part of the state and you see more. Um, but you roll into Knoll and all of a sudden you see a um, African grocery store. Um, you see a Hispanic grocery store. You see a mosque. And it's like, what's going on here? Well, there's a big Tyson factory uh, there in Knoll. And um, around 2010 or so, uh, four to 500 Somali refugees uh, were resettled in Knoll. Uh, so I thought that that was really interesting and uh, kind of a special place. Oh. There we go. No extreme gaming, skateboarding, rollerblades, bicycles. I guess that's extreme gaming in this little town. You see all of these places where they're encouraging the local uh, high school team uh, in their upcoming uh, games. So uh, what's it say? Get them boys, beat them boys, something like that. A little tire shop. Uh, this is a little town close to here. I, I can't recall where it was, but it was devastated by a tornado, uh, destroyed the school there. And uh, this man is telling me all about it. And so as we're standing there chatting, I, I realized that there's a sign on his porch and it says, uh, you can stand on this porch to wait for the bus or your parents. And I don't know that a lot of people would feel comfortable with that. But maybe it's okay in small towns. Uh, this young man came up to me, asked me what the hell I was doing. Uh, I said, I'm just taking pictures, you know, uh, and I, I told him where I worked and, and why I was taking pictures. And, and he, he goes, oh, were you down here like last week taking like nude pictures up on the building over here? And I'm like, no, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> so, I don't know what was going on. I was kind of struck by all the like little flags on this guy's truck, the, the missing window, uh, the no trespassing sign on the tree. Um, you know, and it's just people trying to get by as best they can. This is in St. Charles. They still have gas lights there in St. Charles. So this guy's job was to go around and clean all of those. Also in St. Charles, you can read that sign there, Elijah Lovejoy. First martyr of the free press, he was an abolitionist uh, editor of a newspaper and basically was run out of uh, St. Louis and he fled to um, Alton, Illinois. And um, Illinois is a free state, but it was actually a, uh, a lot of pro-slavery uh, folks were around there. And they were worried that the things that he was writing in the paper were going to cause the town to lose business. Uh, so they were trying to get him to stop, but he wouldn't stop. He, he you know, was adamant that he was going to keep printing um, abolitionist views. 
And so uh, he was ultimately murdered for that. Uh, this is St. Paul, Missouri, beautiful church there. Uh, so I see this guy and he's preparing the baseball field. Uh, I grew up playing baseball, loved it. And I knew exactly what he was doing out there on the field. So I wanted to make that picture and then went inside the church and was just awestruck by how beautiful it was, this massive church in this little town. Just stunning to me. This is a, a mural of Charles Lindbergh barnstorming. You know, and I don't always know who these historical figures are, like what these murals are depicting, but, you know, I, I find them interesting because the townsfolk there uh, believe that it was something important enough to uh, paint that. So uh, I think that's fascinating. Uh, this man and his children were at the uh, laundromat and uh, there's just something uh, in that boy's expression and his eyes. He, he, he feels like an old soul to me in, in some way. And it seems like uh, life's been a little rough for him. Now, that's just what I get. I don't know that that's the truth. I'm not saying that photographs are the truth. They are a truth. And, and that's what I get from it. Uh, let's see, Hannibal, Missouri, home of Mark Twain. And this is another one that is uh, disturbing. Um, it's not a good picture, I admit that. I, I really, this is a, kind of a reject photo for me, but I shared it with you because um, of what's on this, this person's truck. And it says nine out of 10 women are battered, but I eat mine plain. And that's just a, a disgusting thing for me to see as I'm walking around and, and I'm wondering about the people that live in this community and, and why it's okay to put something like that on your car. This man's home was amazing. Uh, from the outside, the photo really doesn't do it justice. He'd spent years and years working on remodeling this old home, and uh, he's a really cool guy, so I had to get a picture of him. Uh, this is a place called Lover's Leap in Hannibal, so, um, which is an interesting name. Uh, but you could go up there, and you can get views of the city and the Mississippi River there. So there's one view and here's another. This couple came up while I was standing up there, very cold day and getting a little selfie from Lover's Leap. I like going to the fair, taking pictures. So um, this, these are the State Fair in Sedalia. And I, it's a little detail, but I love the, the, that he's got his tickets in his front pocket and almost has them sticking out in a way to, to show off, you know, that he got tickets for the, the show in the grandstands that evening. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine, David, who's in the audience tonight, and um, I was sharing with him the story that well, I started my first job working in a fireworks tent for my uncle uh, when I was in the sixth grade summer, between sixth and seventh grade. And I did that for a number of years, and, and that is rough work, sitting in a fireworks tent, 100 degree weather. And, um, and so when I go to the fairs and I see these folks working in those hot conditions in late July, August, it made me think about that. So again, it's sort of that self-portrait idea. You can just see it's hot and miserable.
you got your guns and you got your neat stuff. Getting a little self-portrait here. I, I played at many of these little crappy ball fields growing up, so. And this was, you know, it's just kind of a, a typical kind of, you know, uh, area where the median income is probably very low. And um, I see the, the Trump Pence signs up in the window. And I, I thought that was an interesting juxtaposition. This is a little uh, cancer memorial. And I hadn't seen one of those before, so I thought that was interesting. And then thinking about having a home sitting next to those big silos. And of course, as you're walking around, there's always dogs barking at you, drawing attention to you. <laughs> so I finally took a picture of one of those dogs just giving it to me. I always think it's kind of interesting when they put the, the date that the building was built on the building. That's kind of fun. Trying to go through these a little bit more quickly here. Uh, you know, creepy little mural. This is one that's in the show and, you know, I'm driving down the highway near Poplar Bluff and I see this really interesting building and I'm like, well, what is this thing? I've never seen a building like that in my life. And so then I pull into the parking lot and I start walking around and I realize that it, it's a strip club and uh, it's the wildest looking place I've seen. and a pharmacy that sells silencers. I don't understand it. I like the idea there that, you know, <laughs> the taxidermy wolf, like, you know, ate the child or something. <laughs> and this is an interesting one. This is right on the Mississippi. So they have listed here all of the, um, the floods of the town and how high the water got in that particular year. I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, a little cherub and a little toilet. <laughs> so this is uh, in Poplar Bluff and this photo's in the show. And the next picture, I, I kind of enlarged because I wanted you to be able to, to see the sign there in case you didn't look closely at the photo in the show. And it's another one of those photos that isn't very, or signs that isn't very nice. Uh, can you all read that? So I'll read it to you. It says, Sandy Estes is a slut. I mean, it's awful. But these are the types of things that you encounter and you think, you know, all oh, these are cute little quaint towns and, and then you run into things like this and kind of shatters that. You got your little parade and you got Santa and you got your giant American flag. What more do you need? And in Missouri, um, you know, like I said, Missouri was a slave state. 
Um, cotton wasn't produced that much, mostly in the very southern part of the state. So this is down in the boot hill uh, where cotton would be grown, rice, tobacco was grown um, more along the Missouri River. Uh, so that's where you would find more of those types of um, farms or plantations using uh, slave labor. Have you, any of you ever known somebody that has one of those cat clocks? They're, they've always creeped me out. And so I walk by this uh, little display and I'm like, whoa, there's four of them. It gives me the, the heebie-jeebies. This is uh, Charleston, where small town America lives. And of course, it's like deserted and empty streets. And then I came across these uh, youth walking around and, you know, there's the three of them and they're, they're walking by this uh, building that has like these cars on top. And, and I just think, well, that's kind of an interesting thing. And I uh, love that little girl's expression and how stoic the, the young boy is on the left there. I love that picture. Uh, Cape Girardeau is really amazing. If you go uh, along the Mississippi there in Cape Girardeau, they have all of these amazing, beautiful murals uh, that are painted. And basically it depicts the history um, of the state and uh, the settlement of uh, the Europeans. Uh, and so I, I thought this was a pretty amazing mural. little church out in the country. I, I mentioned that mining was, uh, uh, well, it still is a, a very big industry in the state, especially in the southeastern part. Uh, when the French first settled into Missouri, um, that was one of the very first thing, first enterprises that they went into was mining. Uh, they, the very first uh, enslaved people that were brought to Missouri were brought for the purpose of mining. Um, so uh, a mural kind of depicting uh, mining. I love the message here. You don't need much to have it all. Now, mostly if you travel around Missouri, Missouri is a very red state. And uh, mostly as you're traveling around, you see pro-Trump stuff everywhere. Um, so it was a little surprising to go into this little town and, and find this. It was probably the only anti-Trump thing that I, I ever encountered, to be honest. Uh, these guys uh, were just standing around talking when I rolled into town, got out of the car, walked up, and they saw the cameras. Uh, Jamie was with me, and uh, they saw that we both had cameras on our shoulders and asked, you know, what we were doing, so started talking to them. And then this guy just pulls out his gun to show me, you know, unprompted. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, and this guy uh, proceeds to tell us about an incident that happened in a town close by called Skidmore. And there um, was a murder that happened uh, in the early 80s. And they ended up making a Hollywood film about it. And uh, this guy was kind of like a town bully. And uh, he had like 20 different charges brought up against him. And he always seemed to get a, out of those charges and was never really responsible and just bullied everybody. And so um, he, his son, I guess, had been caught stealing some gum or something from the, the little grocery store in town. Uh, not this guy. I'm saying this guy's telling me the story. And um, so um, the owner of the store was like a 70 year old man. He confronts the boy and the dad who's the town bully doesn't like it. And he ends up shooting this guy in the neck. Well, the guy survives. And as the, as he's, uh, fighting the charge, uh, the, the town basically gathers a mob of about 50 people 
And uh, this guy leaves the bar there in town, goes out to his truck with his wife and is shot dead in his truck. The town bully shot dead in his truck uh, by two different guns they were able to determine. And upon questioning by local police, FBI, um, nobody said who the shooter was, even though there were 50 witnesses, nobody would tell who shot that man. I thought that was an interesting story. So that little town, by the way, Skidmore, Missouri, where that happened. Uh, this guy's name is R.R. R. Stewart. And uh, when we came across him, it was a very hot day and he was out working hard, uh, helping, I, I think it was his boys, unload a truck full of equipment and you know, just sweat was dripping off. And um, we, we talked to him, I asked if I could take a picture and he says, yeah, and, he, and then he begins to tell me how um, he was part of a crew that helped build the Katy Trail in Missouri, um, which is a, a very long uh, biking and hiking trail in Missouri. Uh, and so I thought that was pretty fascinating. And again, he's one of those guys that you can just tell has worked hard his entire life. Am I doing okay? I'm a little, uh, I'm, oh, I'm way over, aren't I? Uh, should I, should I pause and take questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me kind of get to, this is in, uh, what, is it Chillicothe? Yeah, home of sliced bread. You ever hear that phrase, best thing since sliced bread? Well, sliced bread began in Chillicothe, Missouri. I didn't know that. And Chillicothe is another place that uh, murals everywhere in that town. It's really pretty cool. weird little window display. So I really brought way too many slides to show today. I hope that's okay, folks. This is Lexington, which was uh, the largest Civil War battle um, in the western, like states west of Mississippi. And this is up um, to the east of Kansas City. And what's interesting is that uh, on this uh, pillar, there's a cannonball that is stuck, embedded in the, the pillar from that, uh, that Civil War battle there. So I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, trying to go through here. You know, I, I wanna pause on this story and, and I, I'll actually just end with this one. Um, so going around the state, photographing all the towns that I did, um, you know, I. I got approached by a lot of people that were curious, maybe wondering why I was taking the pictures. Um, and I have to say that I, I'm pleased to say that I only ran into one person that I would say was a real jerk. And that was in West Plains and they're coming down the sidewalk as I'm making this picture. So you can see the picture that I make is not about them at all. It's about, you know, the sign and we specialize in guns and diamonds. I'm thinking, oh, this is kind of an interesting thing. And he's just yelling at me the whole time as he's walking up, telling me he's going to break my camera and things like that. So, I, again, I'm happy to report out of 217 little towns that I photographed in, only one uh, guy that gave me any problems. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so thank you again uh, for coming out tonight. Um, I'm pleased to take any questions that you might have. Well, when you were out um, photographing, were you planning on certain times of the day? I mean, were you looking at like trying no, to get someplace in the morning? Or? You know, like I said, I set that goal. I want to photograph at least one small town in every county in Missouri has 114 of them. So, and they're not always easy to get to. And I, I, I mentioned that I, I kind of put that bottom floor at about a thousand on the population. And in some counties, they don't even have a town that has a thousand people. You know, Shannon County is one of those. 
So, um, you know, you, you, I, I would sit down and I would look at the map and I'd circled all of these in my atlas, all the towns that I wanted to try and visit. And I would just try to figure out a game plan. And it's like, okay, I can leave for three or four days. And these are all of the towns that I'm going to try and pass through and, and make it as fuel efficient as I can uh, to get to all these places. So no, sometimes I'm rolling in and it's, you know, noon, one o'clock in the afternoon, and photographers will tell you that's a terrible time to try and go out and, and make pictures. Yeah, I, I wish I could have um, done that, you know, chosen the days that I went out and photographed, but there was just so much ground to cover that I just couldn't do it that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some of the, you know, just the lighting shadows, all that kind of stuff. Well, thank you, but no. <laughs> yeah. Go through some of these that I didn't quite get a chance to show. Um, after your whole experience of the traveling around and taking all these photographs, what would you say that you learned from this? Uh, maybe a reflection? Was there something that I don't know that, that it changed about how you thought or what you saw. So the first thing is, is as I said, there's so much of the state that even though I was born and raised here, lived a majority of my life here, I just never seen. And that was a real th thrill for me to be able to do that. Um, there are some extremely beautiful places in Missouri that I just didn't even know about. Um, I was particularly impressed with that northeastern part of the state up around Hannibal and Louisiana or yeah Louisiana area just extremely beautiful up there and um, but the thing that I, I think that it really did was uh, it it kind of opened my eyes to what's happening in terms of the population decline in those areas um, the thing that I would say is that there there's a there's three common things that you'll find in most small towns. You'll find uh, an antique store. You'll find a Taekwondo studio with trophies in the window and you'll find a dollar general store. That dollar general store means it's like a death rattle for the mom and pops. So when you see dollar general stores in these little towns, a lot of the ways that they're able to plant themselves into those towns is by getting, um, uh, they, they set things up with the town so that they pay lower taxes than what the mom and pop would have to pay. So these little towns try to get these dollar generals in because maybe they don't have a supermarket or anything. So they think that it's gonna be good for the community, but the end result is they take in less taxes and mom and pops are kind of driven out. So those were kind of the eye openers for me, uh, the realization that that's happening. Yeah. Okay, I had one one other quick follow up. Yeah, question. keep them coming. Um, just out of curiosity, how would how many photographs would you say that you had at the end of it? Not even just including the ones that you have here, but like in total. That you took. Well, I can get you really close. Um, I use a program called Lightroom to catalog all of my work. So, you know, it comes off the camera card and it goes into Lightroom and I can keep all of the photos. So uh, in total, it's around 10,000 pictures that I made, uh, you know, and that's going back to like 2012 when I first kind of started working on it. Yeah. That's super impressive. So how long did it take for you to finish the series from start to finish? So I, I would say, you know, I really dug in and started photographing it seriously during that sabbatical in 2018. And we finished up, we hit that last town to get one in every county uh, during the summer of 2019. Um, so, you know, just before all the COVID stuff hit. Uh, we were out photographing that summer in 2019 and, and, and wrapped it up at that point. I say wrap it up. There's, I still have towns that I would still like to visit. Um, 
it's just that I'm not, you know, really hitting it hard uh, these days. I'm, I'm preparing the shows, uh, trying to prepare a book. So I'm building a book dummy at the moment um, and going to put that out and see if I, I might be able to get somebody interested in publishing it. That was definitely good timing to end before 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, it set me back a little bit because I, I was hoping to have the book dummy out there uh, 2021 ready to go um, because of the bicentennial of the, the state being admitted into the union. Um, but I'm, I'm still hoping to make that happen. So uh, you mentioned Andy Griffith, and I just have to ask kind of a two part question. Um, did anyone actually invite you over for lunch or dinner? I mean, in Andy Griffith, we always heard Aunt <laughs> B inviting someone over. So did that ever happen to you? Not that I can recall. Do you recall anybody ever doing that? No. I'm surprised you always They're friendly, that. but they weren't that friendly. But <laughs> always hear about it in small towns. So yeah. I was kind of thinking about that. Uh, my other one was, what was your, like, if you had to be kind of abstract about it, what would the central focus of your photos be? Um, I, I think central focus would be the people that live in, in the small towns. Um, that's just what I, I was surprised that I ended up enjoying that so much. Um, my earlier photography was much more about kind of walking around and finding odd little things as you walk around and, and making pictures of those. But in general, I found that I kind of tried to avoid having people in the photos. Instead, I, I liked having traces of them in the pictures. So this project was kind of a, a, a turn for me in that I really started to enjoy meeting people and hearing the stories. And, and you know, if I could get somebody coming up to me that was suspicious and being like, hey, what are you taking pictures for? You know, and I could turn that into getting a portrait, which yeah. a lot of these ended up being that. Right. Then it was like, you know, awesome. I, I, that's what I love. I, I can definitely say from the stories you've told us, I, it adds so much more character and flavor to the photo that in just black and white gives it so much color and background. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Is there any other questions? Okay. Okay. For those on Zoom, and in person for my class, the code word is Jimmy for attendance. But thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, folks on it. Zoom <laughs> and folks in the audience. Thank you.